Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have made some missteps that have earned them criticism along the way, but perhaps nothing was quite such a monumental oops as them taking private jets while preaching about environmental issues. Critics called them hypocrites for the move, even as Prince Harry defended the decision, noting safety reasons, but it turns out the whole thing could have been avoided. Prince Harry and Markle face major backlash. The outcry over their travel was a result of the couple taking four private jets in 11 days. It seemed like absolute hypocrisy since the non-eco-friendly mode of transportation definitely isn't in line with Prince Harry's passion about saving the environment. Understandably, they came under fire for the move and when asked about it at the launch of his new ecotourism project, Prince Harry explained, I spend 99% of my life traveling the world by commercial. Occasionally there needs to be an opportunity based on a unique circumstance to ensure that my family are safe and it's genuinely as simple as that. But as I said in my speech, for me, it's about balance. He noted at the launch, we can all do better. While no one is perfect, we all have a responsibility for our own individual impact. The question is what we do to balance it out. Prince Harry ignored this piece of advice. Prince Harry reportedly was warned not to fly privately to the Google Climate Change Summit this summer in Sicily, but he ignored the warning. The Mail on Sunday reports that, according to a source, aides warned Harry against taking a private flight to Sicily to attend the Google Climate Change Conference. The prince ignored the guidance and got on the plane. It came back to bite him, badly. The couple followed that up by flying via private jet to Avisa for Markle's birthday, then again by private plane to Elton John's mansion in the south of France with baby Archie. The legendary singer later defended the couple. Of course, Prince Harry's brother Prince William and his wife, Kate Middleton, seemed to make the Sussexes look bad by flying on a budget flight around the same time. Why their Africa tour could turn things around. After Prince Harry reportedly ignored the warning about flying private, the damage was done. All is not lost, however, as his royal tour of Africa with Markle is proving to give their image a much-needed boost. The trip to Africa is a high-profile tour and, by all accounts, Prince Harry and Markle are doing everything right. A royal source shared with the Daily Mail, it's pretty obvious to everyone that there can be no ifs, no buts, it has to go well for them. All royal tours are traditionally fantastic opportunities to generate positive publicity, but this one really matters. The Sussexes are reportedly really listening to the advice they're receiving and have opted to keep their tour more casual, ditching the typical royal protocol in favor of a more down-to-earth approach. Vanity Fair reporter Katie Nichol shared that, according to a source, Prince Harry and Markle requested minimal fuss, formality, and protocol during the tour, including asking that people address them by their first names. Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are currently on day six of their royal tour with baby Archie, and senior aides say the high-stakes trip has to be a success, according to royal experts. Meghan Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry's highly anticipated royal tour of Southern Africa is already more than halfway through, as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex embark on day 6 of 10 today. Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor is also with his parents, and the Duke and Duchess delighted royal watchers with an appearance from their new son as he met Archbishop Desmond Tutu on Wednesday. As Harry finishes his emotional work with anti-landmine and HIV-slash-AIDS campaigners in Angola today, royal experts have spoken about why this tour in particular is so crucial for the royal couple. This year, their trip comes after not only the private jet drama, but what was perceived as a family snub when the Sussexes decided not to visit the Queen at Balmoral, even as Meghan flew to New York for the US Open a week later. She added, the couple has hired an American PR firm to help with damage control, and sources say they hope the upcoming trip will help turn the tide. A source told Ims Nickel, they and their aides know this tour has to be a success, and everything has been planned meticulously so there is no margin for error. Royal commentator Ingrid Seward also spoke to the author, and said that she believes royal baby Archie will be key in cementing the couple's success. M. Seward said, it will take more than a great tour to turn the tide completely, but if it goes well then it could be the start of a smoother path for them in the press. There's a lot riding on the tour and the feeling is it really has to go well for the couple. 
Archie is set to emulate his cousin Prince George, who went on his first royal tour with Kate Middleton and Prince William at less than a year old. The little prince was so popular that he was dubbed the Republican Slayer by the Australian media. M. Seward continued, people will want to see baby Archie who could be the key player in this. I think if they show us a glimpse of Archie it could turn things around for the Sussexes. She also gave her opinion, it's a step in the right direction. When you look at all the bad press they've had, it's clear that they've got to claw back some of the goodwill that made them so popular around the royal wedding and which has diminished ever since. Unlike Kate and William's highly photographed arrival with Prince George in Australia, and Meghan and Harry's own prominent arrival in Cindy last year, this time the Duke and Duchess of Sussex made a very low-key royal arrival in South Africa. Ms. Nicol explained, there won't be a traditional welcome at the airport when the family and their 16-strong entourage arrive, because the South African president is not there to greet the couple. As Harry will to travel on to Malawi later today, Ms. Nicol also explained what Meghan and Archie's schedule is set to look like. She wrote, Meghan will stay behind with Archie and continue a busy schedule of her own, though many of her meetings will be private so as not to detract from Harry's work.